<laughs> oh, oh boy. So welcome, everyone. Uh, in fact, this is the kind of conference uh, you've got your lens cap on, but other than that, you won't be able <laughs> He's brilliant, but he can't take a picture. Uh, <laughs> and why are you taking a picture of me, Zach? Anyway, this is the kind of conference that makes it difficult to be dean, uh, because I will spend my day uh, putting out fires, meeting with angry constituents, uh, when I would much prefer to be sitting and indulging in what is obviously a intellectual smorgasbord. But I got to, uh, you know, review the, uh, you know, the, the list of speakers and I want to introduce the, the conference to you. It's really, it's remarkably exciting. It's emblematic of the kind of dynamic community we have here at Harvard Medical School where our goal is really bringing people together. So I want to congratulate uh, Zach and the other organizers on this third annual Precision Medicine Conference. Um, it is my first attending as dean. I think uh, the next time it's offered, I will try to clear at least half my schedule so that I can actually attend because this is an em enormously important area. There's a tremendous amount of excitement uh, and progress in the field of, uh, of precision medicine. And it's uh, truly exciting to see how uh, our community is coming together to catalyze the kinds of collaborative approaches and very, very stimulating conferences that this uh, represents. Now, I often have encouraged our students and our faculty to imagine what medicine is going to look like a generation from now. And it's going to look very, very different. So envision a world where we can prevent disease by editing our DNA, it's going to be possible, uh, by reprogramming our tissues, uh, reprogramming our stem cells, where we attenuate aging, where we can cure cancer increasingly through therapeutics that are specifically targeted to a patient's genetic signatures. So, this is really the foundations of an individualized approach to medicine, and it's an approach that many of you are really bringing into modern medical practice. Now, like many of you and your loved ones, uh, our keynote speaker this morning is actually living proof. So Shirley Pepke is here today because when her ovarian cancer recurred, she didn't share her oncologist's presumption that the standard second line therapy, which was quite toxic, would actually be best for her. No, instead, surely, she researched her own tumor biomarkers, and she discovered that an alternative treatment uh, would involve a particular uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor. And uh, now Shirley's in remission. And she's increasingly using genomics, machine learning technologies, to build a tool that can tailor ovarian cancer therapies to countless other patients. So this is exactly the kind of success story that uh, we hope to see repeated here uh, at Harvard Medical School. And I, for one, see this as a key priority for HMS uh, and a key area for innovation. So we need to ensure that the research that we do at Harvard Medical School, at academic medical centers, around the country and around the world are really translating into new therapies, really um, ultimately new cures for the diseases that currently plague us. So this includes not only widespread conditions, which obviously everyone would love to tackle, um, conditions like Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinson's, a, a whole variety of others, diabetes, we could list, list many, but there's also in individualized and precision medicine approaches, the opportunity to target those incredibly rare diseases. You know, when we think about the many thousands of genetically defined Mendelian disorders, many of those are gonna require highly precise and personalized therapy. So to do this, we're gonna have to reimagine paradigms for biomedical research. We're gonna have to reimagine paradigms for therapeutics development 
and paradigms for regulatory approval for these highly individualized therapies. So um, I assert that innovation then in this area is going to advance best when we forge collaborations across disparate fields and sectors, creating hybrid organizations and inventing entirely new pathways to cut through the thicket that too frequently impedes and obfuscates the progress we need. So what I've realized is looking at the conference today and examining the speaker list, uh, getting, getting very enthusiastic, it's because many of the speakers as well as many of you here in the audience are actually the ones who are leading the way. So the speakers that will be featured have created uh, diverse uh, and innovative business models. Uh, many of these flout tradition. Uh, they demonstrate how the ideals of precision medicine can be translated into viable endeavors in the real world. So the scope and variety of solutions featured in this program are really, are truly inspiring. So we have a grassroots company, Picnic Health, that's making headway where large academic medical centers have struggled uh, to generate single, continuous, digital medical records for patients whose, scare, whose, whose care has otherwise been scattered across multiple medical centers. Uh, we have a self-professed recovering academic who transformed his laboratory into a biotech startup that interfaces directly with pharma to tackle diseases that others considered too rare to cure. We have academics, physicians, corporate executives, former federal employees even, working to improve consistency and quality control across precision medicine services by drawing on lessons learned from the consumer product realm. We have our closing keynote speaker, inspirational Jessica Richmond, who's harnessed evolving technology and public interest in the microbiome to jumpstart her company, Ubiome. So by providing kits that sample the microbial communities in multiple areas of the body, <clears throat> Ubiome is simultaneously helping individual patients learn about their personal microbiomes and gathering data that contributes to our overall understanding of the human microbiome. And I understand that even kits are going to be distributed later. And you can determine, maybe the kits determine which areas of the body you actually sample. It's going to be fascinating. I'll get my kit on the way out. Uh, and now, as this symposium celebrates, year after year, the people most often taking the reins are citizen scientists. They are revolutionizing our concept of who can become leaders in changing the course of human disease. Jamie Haywood was a mechanical engineer until his younger brother, Stephen, was diagnosed with and ultimately passed away from ALS. Jamie then dedicated himself to accelerating biomedical research, and he launched the world's first nonprofit biotechnology company, which is making strides in ALS, and founded Patients Like Me, which has harnessed the expertise and energy of hundreds of thousands of patients to create supportive online communities and generate data sets to improve research and care. Matt might, where is Matt? Have we seen, there's Matt, hey Matt, good to see you. Matt, uh, who has become a familiar face at this conference and who I had the pleasure to meet and be inspired by, is a computer scientist whose son, Bertrand, was diagnosed with a disease that at the time didn't even have a name. And now Matt is running a company that conducts ultra-rapid small molecule screening in search of accelerated means of discovering therapies for rare diseases. And he's also about to become the founding director of the Hugh Paul Personalized Medicine Institute at the University of Alabama at the Birmingham School of Medicine. Kathy Juisty started out as a sales rep at Merck and she was a, then later a successful executive at Searle when she developed multiple myeloma and learned that at the time no new therapies had been developed in something like half a century. So since then, the nonprofit foundations that she's helped spur and the unlikely collaborations that she's forged between groups who were accustomed to otherwise competing have led to a remarkable degree of innovation in the treatments for multiple myeloma. New FDA approved drugs that have literally doubled the life expectancy of patients. 
So in evidence today in this conference and every speaker uh, and in, in so many of you in the audience are ingenuity, unconventional thinking, ambition, determination, passion, and at the center of all we do in medicine, compassion. So even when they are initially motivated by their own personal health crises or those of their children's or loved ones, these individuals, many of whom featured today, are launching businesses because they want to help others. So they embody the deep commitment to service that I see in so many of our own medical students and our own faculty and why it makes me so proud to be dean of Harvard Medical School. I can't think of any more audacious goal than to seek to transform human health in our lifetimes. And it's only through innovation, collaboration, and commitment to service that we can make the progress that we all strive for. So thank you all for today and helping to light that path. And I wish you the best of discovery in the, in the symposium today. Thank you very much, Zach.